hung a giant portrait of George Washington in the, in the privy, in the outhouse. And every time he would return, return from it, they would sort of wait for a reaction, and he would, would get him hot, and he would sort of mix him up in the negotiations. But he wouldn't, he wouldn't let him show. He, he wouldn't let uh, them have the satisfaction. And eventually they asked him, they said, Colonel Allen, what, whatsoever do you think of our, uh, our, our portrait of your leader? And he said, well, I'd rather think it's appropriate, and I'd rather think it's the only place we can hang. He said, what do you mean? And he said, well, in my experience, um, nothing makes an Englishman have me the privy quite so quickly as the sight of General Washington. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wonder if perhaps, as part of the solution to the moral hazard problems of bailouts, we might have a new policy, the same fiduciary duty, it turns out, as the board of directors and the executives of the company, to the other shareholders, uh, to maximize shareholder wealth. Uh, under securities laws, if you have joint and several liability with the company for violations of the securities laws. So control shareholders not uh, not not a, not a fun status to have under under those aspects of the law. The unique thing that the government gets though is sovereign immunity, uh, and so that uh, really changes the dynamic completely. It makes it very difficult. Now the analysis on whether sovereign immunity attaches to the government's exercise of shareholder power is uh, it's extensive and it, it I I haven't even fully answered uh, all of the unique questions that come out there. I've got a paper on this Treasury Incorporated. I'll